drummers. Oh jeez. So loud. My monkey theme is just so loud. I hope you guys are ready for COVID 2022 Monkey Boogaloo, aka AIDS 2. The monkey strikes back. <laughs> um, there is there is rampant news, speculation about a new terrible smallpox type disease called monkeypox, where it is predominantly affecting the LGBTQIA plus UA among us and the plus ua means also ukraine so it's now the lesbian gay bisexual transsexual intersex asexual and i forget what the p stands for um plus ukraine so uh that that is the people those are the people most most affected by monkeypox currently according to the uk health statistics but i'm sure that narrative will change very very soon Hello, Josh. Hello, Justin Goad, Goadhot. Hello, everyone. Um, just just an a update on the Super Chat thing, since I'm finding my footing on that still. I'm going to try reading them at the end, right before the outro song today. So they'll still show up, um, but I'm just going to read them at the end and try to make something entertaining out of it. Because uh, I do I want to... I have my little goal thing. I added that to the screen. And the goal is probably not going to get met every month, but that's fine. It's um That's just the DDoS mitigation stuff. And that's... I think that's so close to being set up now. So that's that's what that's for. Uh, okay. Let's talk about the monkeys. Uh, as as I had a little snippet there. This is our, our little news roundup. Um, the United the United Kingdom government has announced that there were two more cases of monkeypox identified uh, since May 9th, and they say that the virus spreads through close contact, and the UK Health Society or whatever is advising against advising individuals, particularly those who are gay, bisexual, or MSM mainstream media. So the gays, the bisexuals, and the journalists to be alert to any unusual rashes or lesions on any part of their body, especially their genitalia, and to contact a sexual health service if they have concerns. Uh, it's not described as a sexually transmitted disease, but it's like a blood, I think it's a blood, it's a blood and fluids disease. So that's a level three infection in Space Station 13. Uh so I don't know if you're if you're gay. I advise having sex with British people. Um, I advise that for everybody, actually, not just the homosexuals. But it has already spread to Spain and Portugal, from what I from what I've heard. So get ready for that. Get ready to be told to wear your mask, even though it is a fluids disease. Everybody must do their part and don't 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 complain because we're all in this together and it's one race, the human race. And if gay men want to have sex and pass along. Virulent, ten uh, percent kill uh, mortality rate diseases to each other. We have to support that because love is love, and come is come, as as uh, Common Felt would say. Uh, speaking of come, Discord. Uh, I watched this video which came out on the fifteenth by a channel called Moon, and I would actually suggest watching it. Uh, he has a sort of centrist perspective. It's kind of lefty. So if you watch it and get angry, just like remember that you don't have to be angry about stuff. The video is interesting because it, it kind of shows how uh, Tencent, which is a Chinese company, w operates by, by buying stakes in other companies and how that poses a security risk to to people in the West and how that advantages uh, the Chinese government. Very interesting to me because you know how I am. Um, though, I mean, I, 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 I would rather my information be read by the Communist Party or by Russia than by the U.S. and the East, the the European governments. But uh, you have to pick your poison, I guess. Uh, though, I guess if you if you go through Discord, it gets read by both. So you might as well minimize your vector there. And uh, not use applications that are owned by the Chinese. Friendly reminder that KiwiFarms.cc is up and we have a matrix server, which you can find in the Internet and Technology Board, in case you're inclined. Uh, Element kind of sucks. The matrix thing kind of sucks. But maybe one day it will get better. And if that happens, it will be because people get tired of fucking Discord and Skype and all these bullshit services selling them out. Uh, oh, and speaking of, one of the most interesting things about this 
little uh, documentary is that it explains how nothing is ever deleted off um, Discord. If you delete your account, it just like pseudo anonymizes your data, uh, but it still keeps all those conversations and messages that you've sent. So there's a open source repository called UnDiscord. And if you run this, you get a nice little interface to actually delete your messages from Discord. So if you happen to have like a bunch of old private messages on Discord, realize that those will never ever go away. And uh, you have the option if you run, the, it, it, you would have to go literally go to Discord and then right click and then click delete on every single message you've ever sent. And this tool does that automatically. And this tool, um, I remember when this first came out, Discord had like crashed because so many people were using it and there wasn't any rate limits on how fast you could delete messages. So they've really uh, throttled like how fast you can delete messages now and it's like one per second if even that. So it's really, really slow. It has to run overnight basically to delete messages with somebody that you've um, been talking to forever. But even if you delete your account, it will not get rid of those those old conversations of yours. So uh, if you're concerned about like Xi Jinping knowing about all your gay furry, uh, what was, who was that guy that got in trouble for being like a furry fart fetishist? If you're that guy and all your furry fart uh, role plays are on Discord somewhere and private messages, you should definitely get this and, and use it to hide your embarrassments from the Communist Party. Because when they take over, they will be using that to decide who gets castrated and who doesn't. Pyrocynical, that's right, pyrocynical. <laughs> uh, not flamenco as far as I'm aware. Okay, um, and oh, I, I'm also, I've been cognitively aware of something for a while. I'm a big fan of the dead internet theory. And I think over 2020, we're going to, we're going to really see artificial or well, not artificial intelligence, but machine learning, um, kind of replace human interactions. And it's, it's so convincing now how much they can do with technology to fool people to pass the turning test basically. And, and fool people that they're having a genuine conversation with a human being when they're really not, uh, technology can, uh, superimpose faces on bodies so you can take a person and put them on somebody else's body and have them do whatever you want. You can synthesize a voice pretty convincingly, convincingly now, and you can emulate conversations pretty effectively. Like it, I think by 2030, it'll be possible for, um, like the YouTube commentator shit. Like you have VTubers already, right? What if you take a VTuber and you take the little baby voice that they do? And you synthesize that. And then you have a VTuber that runs like 24 seven and just rakes in super chats. And everyone's like, I can't believe that, that, um, ML Chan is stream 16 hours a day. What a hard worker. And then it just turns out that she's like a robot that exists in Japan. And all she does, is she exists to like play, to look at news footage and give weird commentary and like read super chats and shit. I'm the only real person. I, I could be fake. You have no idea. None of you have any fucking idea if I'm actually a real person. This could all be synthesized. There's no picture. There, I don't like live stream. And even if I did, it would be like, okay, you could just have like a person sit there and then superimpose whoever's face you want on, the, on that person. And it will get more and more convincing to the point where you can't really tell uh, over time. Yeah, like Ralph. Ethan Ralph isn't a real person. You think anyone is that fat and gross and stupid? No. That is a communist plot to undermine the white race by having somebody who's white be such a disgusting pig monster. No way could that person be real. Um, but I, I noticed this today. I don't post on 4chan, but I saw this post because I like to read the uh, um, certain threads. And this guy is replying to someone about how in the Third Reich, they never made gold coins because if you don't, if you know your history, you'll know that after World War One, Germany was basically bankrupted because the Allies demanded um, war re reparations in the form of gold payments. So they didn't have any gold. They did make silver coins, but they didn't make gold coins. So this guy promotes his thing by having a gold coin. This guy just replies saying that, you know, um, the Third Reich was not fond of gold as a as a currency. And then this reply to this says. Let me, let me read the original post just out of context. The human being says, Big Gov in general hated real money. Reichsmarks are cool, but those were minority in an economy dictated by paper. Basically saying there was more paper money than silver coins uh, even then. To which this person replies, their only post in the thread, JP Morgan never manipulated the price of precious metals. They were fine because the government was really looking for a quick cash grab. JP Morgan is a reputable financial institution that saved the nation from the bankruptcy in the past. They would never do anything to hurt the average investor. 
And one reply in response to this conversation about Reichsmarks and the Third Reich's economy, and it's just like, what the fuck is this? And it's definitely a robot because it's like countering this message from the 2020 news. J.P. Morgan's metal desk was a criminal enterprise, U.S. says, and they were fined nine, almost a billion dollars for it. And now if someone, if the bots read a message about gold or something, uh, I don't even know what would trigger this uh, to, to post. But this is definitely like a machine that thinks that this person is talking about J.P. Morgan's um, uh, metal uh, manipulation in the market and how they got fined for it. And it's counter signaling it. And it's like, I bet you a not insignificant amount of all interactions on places like Twitter on, on 4chan where it's anonymous and it's even easier. Um, a lot of what we see, think is, is human interaction is, is just fucking machines that work for companies trying to convince us of shit. And I really hate it. I really hate the internet. <laughs> it's just such a, a horrific evil, uh, which is why I dedicate all my time uh, on the internet and I, I do internet projects and, and shit. Um, because I've been working on Sneed for you again. It's been a couple months, but I sat down this week and I did new code related to the um, permission system. And I've had it in my head for a while. I've been thinking it over, even if I've not been working on it, how I want to do, like, I don't want to get too into detail, but in a forum you have lots of different forums, right? You have different nodes, and then you have users, and then you have user groups. So a user could have like 15 different groups, and each of those groups could have different permissions on every category, and they could inherit permissions from you know parent forums and subforums and such. So it's a really complicated system to get permissions working in a forum, and I've been I've been thinking about how to do it, and now I'm I'm finally implementing it, and today I've been working on this. I'll show you. Uh, this is a diagram created from the database, and as you can see, this is what it looks like all automatically leveled out. And I've been working over here, setting up the permission stuff so that I can start adding that data and, and making it into something that works. Right now, it's just abstract code. So um, this is this is my little current current stuff. I'm going to give you guys need for updates, even if it doesn't make sense to normal people, because I it's a good commitment. It's a good commitment to say I'm going to do something right. Um, so besides that, I'm going to SQL inject, you know, good luck. I'm behind seven, seven proxies. The other thing I've been working on is dealing with people yelling at me. Um, the Australian government has decided to yell at me and they say that here on a letter I received on the 18th, which would be Wednesday, um, Dear Local LLC, removal notice requiring you to remove Class 1 material from your service requiring immediate action. I am a delegate of the eSafety Commissioner for the purpose of Section 109 of the Online Safety Act 2021. And this is from the Australian government. And they're telling me I have to remove these posts. Um, actually, not these posts, but these videos um, of the Buffalo shooting recently. And uh, this, the manifesto, the, the PDF file. So not just the videos, but also his manifesto had to be deleted. Or, according to them, I would face a fine of up to 555000 Australian dollars. Uh, so I told them in reply, the Kiwi Farms is an American company. The United States laws protecting freedom of speech, or has laws protecting freedom of speech in the distribution of information. And uh, I've not received a reply, but a lot of people were disappointed in my reply. They expected me to, like, go off king and slay. Um, I'm not in the mood to make any enemies right now. But also, the main reason why I decided not to, like, get shitty with them is the New Zealand government actually requ did not request me to delete videos. Uh, they might have, but what they actually wanted from me was identifying information of every single person who had accessed the video and shared it. Uh, and not even just like shared it or posted in the thread about it, but actually looked at the video. They wanted every IP of all of that. Because in New Zealand, the way that their laws are set up is that they have one criminal statute for banned videos. And this law encompasses everything that they ban, and also child pornography. 
So they have uh, CSAM banned, and then they have other videos banned. So basically, the Brenton Tarrant video um, is essentially prosecuted as child pornography under their under their their legal framework. And so, if I had turned that over, everybody from New Zealand who had access that video would be essentially facing a a uh, accessing child pornography violation under under the law and people in the country were prosecuted and found guilty and sentenced to like seven years in jail for looking at this video uh that's why i was shitty with them um australia did not request anything near that they just wanted me to delete it i told them no that's all that that's all that was necessary from that perspective why is that entire region of the world such shit the answer is is that they're descendants from british people and british people are shit so uh, Australia has, uh, as far as the Buffalo thing, I don't, I, I don't have any notes for it. Um, my general take is I, I, number one, I do not, here's, here's my diverging opinion from most people. I don't believe that, um, either BT or this guy were feds. Like, I don't believe that they were MK ultra agents. I don't believe in any of that. Um, Brenton Tarrant outlines his motivations very clearly. And if you've ever been through Europe and, and visited places like Paris, uh, you would know, like, it, it is it is shocking. Um, if you've lived in Europe and you haven't been to these cities in 10 years and you visit these cities, it is shocking to see uh, how culturally enriched it is. And if you're someone like Brenton Tarrant who's, like, a wayward soul already and you're, you're depressed and you're thinking, maybe if I go to Europe and I see things, you know, Maybe Europe is is uh, you know still has European charms to it, and you go like he says he went to, I think he went to 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 Nice and he went to Paris he went to all these big cities in in Europe and was just like holy shit it's it's like filthy and disgusting everywhere now that was his motivation uh, I don't think that's a MK Ultra thing he wasn't even American uh, as far as this guy goes like you look at people grow, coming of age today. What if you're 18 years old? If you just turned 18, what do you have? What do you have to look forward to? Everything feels like it's collapsing. Uh, you have all these people you can blame and stuff, but it's like there. There is literally. I I have. If you're 18 right now, you have no hope. You're shit out of a garbage education system in a country that hates you, and. What are you going to do? You're going to go to college and you're going to go into debt to study some bullshit like accounting so that you can never own a house so that you can you can never own property. You may not ever have like a family because everyone's so fucking weird and, and crazy now. And what are you going to raise a family in this broken, retarded country? It's like I, can, I, I fully understand why people are driven to, to like and like to, to I don't know. I don't know how to phrase that. But you know what I mean. Um, and then, of course, when this happens, you know, people start shooting at each other and themselves, and it becomes news. Everyone's like, oh, what about the guns? Like, I don't know, Congress, why don't you ever ask yourself why people want to kill themselves? <laughs> is that is this ever a question that runs through your head? Why are people so miserable? Nobody ever asked that question. Nobody cares. Uh, which just compounds the problem forever and ever and ever. Nobody, nobody gives a shit. Nobody actually wants to fix any problems. It's like everyone's just trying to hustle as much money as possible so that they can hide before, <laughs> before the bottom falls out and everyone just uh, descends into chaos. So that, that's my remember. Return to monkey. Return to monkey. Become monkey pilled. Find find self defense mechanisms. Find your your Montana log cabin. Get ready for the monkey ages. Anyways, uh, Australia should have other things to um, to concern itself with. For instance, uh, two days before this letter was sent, there was news about a ma tra trans identifying male, a Tim, as they like to say now. Uh, visiting a Lego park in Australia and uh, or a museum in Australia and playing with Legos with little children while wearing like fetish apparel that is plainly visible to all the little kids there. And when people complained to the Australian Museum about this, they said that it's a welcome welcoming environment. Uh, let's see. 
Man, okay, this is the highlighted part. Man in fetish gear sitting with a group of young children building with Legos or blocks in the Lego pit. The man is pictured in a midriff top and miniskirt outfit accessorized with fishnet stockings and a suspender belt. He is sitting next to a man dressed in similar attire. Uh, I don't know how the, this is from the complainant. I don't know how the museum knows if it's a fancy dress either. It might just be his or her look. The Australian Museum has defended the attendee complained about, claiming that the individual was in fancy dress. The venue has confirmed the Lego pit will now be a children's only area. It featured nights at the museum events. Uh, we have the teams investigating confirmed that the individual in fancy dress were keeping to themselves and had not interacted with anyone else in that area that was open to all. We feel that this was fully addressed by the Australian Museum on the night of the event. Um, So, I don't know. These people, the thing is, is that, like, they they don't have to, like, touch anybody. Like, they like to make people feel uncomfortable. They like to look, to sit like this in open view of kids. Just, like, imposing themselves on women and children is what's arousing to them. Uh, but Australia has, of course, no issue with this. That That's just fine. That's just normal. Uh, my other favorite, by the way, this is like a trans full episode. I apologize. I did not realize until after I was done assembling my notes that this is like a trans heavy thing. This would be perfect for like a July 1st stream, but uh, it's a little bit early. That's okay. Because Jim Sterling has officially lost 100,000 subscribers since he transitioned. Ugh. I'm still suffering from allergies, by the way. I know. If I sound, if I sound, I, I am very sluggish and I just sneeze horrifically and I, I apologize. I'm, I'm on the up and up still. He's lost 100,000 and um, I will again commit to my audience that if he goes under 800,000, which he's very close to doing, I will do another, uh, well, hopefully he'll put out like another uh, seething video. I think he will after 800,000 because... Precipitously, he's been losing about a thousand subscribers a month or uh, per video, which is impressive because even DSP has like 180,000. And it's just like at a certain point, people just stop paying attention to your uploads or you have like zombie accounts that aren't used anymore. But Jim Sterling, it's like he puts out videos and then his fans still like find reasons to unsubscribe. But before you become, you know, I know that a lot of you are feeling bad for Jim Sterling. You love his content, or Zer's content. I think he goes by any pronoun, so I can say him. Because his name is still J James Stephanie Sterling or something. It's very strange. But in case you're feeling bad for him because you just love the Jimquisition, uh, have no fear. He is still making over 12,000 euros a month from uh, 6,783 patrons. So he is making like $15,000 a month, every month, regardless of what he puts out and the quality from, from his patrons, which is really just fucking crazy. By the way, subscribe to my gum road. <laughs> the link will be at the end of the stream. It's on, it's on my site too. If I had $15,000 a month, I would be a happy boy. <laughs> That's my goal. I'm trying to, I'm trying to scrape together a couple of nickels so I can afford my DDoS filter. <laughs> Because he's sexually frustrated. Well, that's a lot of people that he'll be talking about. Um, in case you're wondering how he looks, here here you go. This is that goth GF, Big Mommy Milkers, that everyone talks about, right? Automatically for this very shot. How do you do? It's me, James Stephanie Sterling, with yet another episode of the Jimquisition for you. Sony boss Jim Ryan okay. thinks that... Uh, St uh, okay, imagine, like, a British woman... Um, that's, uh, imagine a British woman wearing a silly hat that's like steampunk in pink. Staff at the company should respect everybody's opinion when it comes to the overturning of okay, Roe v. Wade, when it comes to... How, how does he have, like, actually, how much HRT do you take to get knockers like to that? ...effectively criminalize abortion. He said this in the same email where he said he it's was crazy. What's really funny is that at the end, someone no notices him. Look at this. Oh, gosh. Actually, hold up. He's in the UK again. So uh, he walks away from his rock after doing his video. It's a treacherous path. 
Let's watch this. This guy comes out with his dog. I guess he was like standing behind listening or something. Come out. There he is. And he recognizes him and says, have you ever seen a YouTuber called Jim Sterling? So he's like standing there listening to, to Jim do his tirade and then he like approaches it. Listen to how much mouth this guy is though. Then he should know, he definitely knows Jim Sterling. Like there's no way that this person has a doppelganger walking around in a different country. I don't know. So this is the average Jim Sterling fan, I guess. He's some some mushmouth guy walking around in the UK with his dog. Very strange times, chat. Very strange. That's your Jim Sterling update. Uh, we hope that there will be a rage video in the near future. Um. Oh geez, how do I approach this topic? This is this is delicate. I, I'm I'm gonna risk pissing off like three completely different categories of individual depending on how I mention this. Uh. So I'm a, I am, I wouldn't say I'm a fan. I like a couple Ken Ash Corp songs, and I've taught I I played them. I played them as outro songs before. Uh, a couple hours ago, Ken Ash Corp mysteriously he's been inactive for about two years, released a song called PPP. I'm only gonna play a couple seconds of it. So this, I'm pretty sure that this is the rabbit from the Ralph drama, right? And that's Ken Ashcorp's Panda Girl thing that he's used for like a decade now. I And it, it's even tags it, the, the Pipkin Pippa Ch with the Japanese. There's no mention of the PPP or Andy Worski anywhere, but I am certain that this is a reference to PPP because... If you look through his catalog, you'll see that his catalog is mostly his songs with like softcore porn of his panda character being like femdom by video game characters. But four years ago, which is when he was more active, he released a song called Adam Morsky, which I played. There's a legend that song in Rhode Island told to children with faces a glee, but a hero, an absolute madman. Bomb the shit out of that company. No more Lotus or Power Nine bullshit. Those pedophiles knew it was nigh. That man got on a plane in Toronto, got an AK or four, and prepared to say hi. Adam Worski, axe wielding maniac. Bro, you fuckers, we pray for your soul. This was a song that was uh, directly related to like IBS trauma back in the day because he got, um, I can't remember the details, but he had some kind of weird thing with Hasbro. I think Gamergate related because I think Ken was involved in Gamergate uh, to some degree. Um, so he definitely knows uh, at Andy Worski. And there, there's no way that this is not a reference to PPP, even if it's about the Pippa. But if they know the Pippa thing, then they also know about PPP and Ralph. It's just very strange. It's very strange times, chat. Um, I'll tell you how I know him, though. I don't know him. I, I don't know the guy. But I know of his songs because he used to have a drama channel called Forever Pandering, where he made, like, songs making fun of people. And I knew him from way back in, like, 2013, 2014. He made a song about Andrew Dobson, who is completely irrelevant now, but he was a cartoonist who made, like, a popular comic strip, like, in the late 2000s. And then um, he just started making everything, like, a weird lesbian self-insert fantasy. So... He got caught up. 
Forever Pandering, Ken Ashcourt made a two-part documentary thing. Like, this was way before people would make two-part documentaries about, like, weirdos on the internet. Um, called Sins of a Complacent Artist, making fun of uh, Andrew Dobson. I'd actually recommend that video. It's pretty entertaining. And he made this song about how he would trace shit. Andrew Dobson, professional artist, traces pictures of Big Ben, goes to sell them at conventions. Five minutes in Photoshop, I hope you die on your way to MCM. On your way to MCM. So that was my introduction to him. I really like that song so much so that in the this is okay this is the kiwi farms archive this is back before i had uh we could do video uploads on the site i had this thing just called the archive where i would archive entire, entire channels and for whatever reason i couldn't i knew i downloaded this shit but i couldn't find where it's under andrew dobson so i just archived his forever pandering channel to andrew dobson this channel um he has deleted where he has deleted all the drama related shit from this so he's been interested in this internet drama for like forever and I, I had the, I made the white decision to archive this years and years ago. And uh, like gamer entitlement, yeah, this is perfect. This is like, uh, oh god, do I dare open this live? To get a good aiming has never been cheaper, so you. Yeah, he did like reaction videos during Gamergate. He tried to delete all of this, but I, I archive things that I like, and there's no escape. <laughs> there's no escape from this. Uh, I don't know. Very interesting. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what if he if he makes more stuff because uh, I like some of his songs. I'm not gonna say which ones though, because I'll get I'll get bullied. <laughs> uh, okay. Um. It, I, I guess I, is that like an update? Is that like an update on this guy that I've never talked about before in my entire life? I guess so. I do think he's probably gender bent though. You need to just come out, Ken. What's a female version of Ken? There is none. Ken's like too too much of a mask, too much of a is a big onion chad name. Ken Kendra. Yeah, Kenneth is is as oniony as you get. That's why Kenneth Engelhart runs the onion farms because that boy that boy can't get enough onions. Kendra. Okay, Karen. Whatever. Karen Ashcorp. Whatever. He needs to just come out with it. Pull the band-aid off. We'll all accept you for for, her, for the beautiful panda girl <laughs> that, that you really are. Maybe he's not. I'm giving him too much of a hard rap. He's not transgender. He's trans-ethnic. He's, he's actually Chinese. He he had some really good pork fried rice a couple years ago. And was like, fuck, I want to be a panda. I want to eat pork fried rice. I want to sing communist ch songs in Ching Chong language and shit. He's like me. Anyways. Kevin, Kevin, guys, this is a request from O O One, a moderator whose name I cannot pronounce because his name doesn't have a, an actual name attached to it. He gave me some footnotes about the tranche. So, to go over it, uh, Kevin Gibbs is the am hole. I did a whole stream about the tranche a while back, and uh, Kevin, aka Catherine, aka Goat Arc, because he's still into to feuda goat girls or whatever. Which, you know, this is probably the same story that happened to Ken Ashcore, based on, like, his, his like, pictures of shit. This is, this is a man who's watched, like, too much, like, Yuri femdom shit as, as a developing young man. And is now like, I wish I was a femdom Yuri panda girl. And the same thing happened to Kevin. And he probably shouldn't. You know, I take it back. I don't wish bad things. Don't strewn out. I'll show you why, Ken, Kendra. I'll show you why you shouldn't strewn out. Uh, Kevin is currently defending some guy that he knows who is a furry artist, and he's actually a known convicted pedophile. Uh, this message by has actually changed his name. His birth name was Joshua Neil Barney as he was convicted. This is his mugshot as a child sex offender. He now goes by Farah Barney. Um, but he was pled guilty for two attempted sexual exploitations of a minor uh, that happened in 2008 and somehow Kevin knows this guy and this person's still active in the furry community. Uh, it says here, tail poof writer, artist, writer, freedom fighter. He fights for the P's and the LGBTQIAP plus UAs. 
Black Lives Matter. Does that count? Is he like Hispanic? What the fuck? Whatever. He's he's his little tinks. That's what he wants to go by. Dissertation in Messenger's VR dev. <laughs> he's a trans programmer. <laughs> we are so fucked. China is just going to fucking roll us up in a carpet. These are our developers. We have convicted furry transsexual pedophiles. No exaggeration writing all our code code for us. Meanwhile, China is just like cracking the whip. She, her, circle mom astronomer. Uh, anyways, associated with Kevin, and uh, Kevin says that he had an interaction with them. This person says, I'll give you the benefit of a doubt since you follow a certain person, so here you go. You should be informed about tail poof. And then, oh, Mary. No way. So this is like someone at the tranche now? No, wait. Okay, so this don't give up skeleton Greek. Gray is true, is married to tail poof. And Kevin gives his friends with them somehow. And says that you do realize convicted doesn't mean a person actually did anything, right? Get your transphobic bootlicking out of my fucking mentions. So he responds to this pled guilty of two counts of attempted sexual exploitation as a minor as literally didn't do nothing. Good boy, never would hurt a fly. Just because he pled guilty to molesting children or attempting to molest children, I guess, based on this. I guess he got caught in like a 2008. That's about right for all those... Um, uh, pedophile like justice things on on TV. He got caught in like a, a sting operation. Just because he attempted to seduce a child doesn't mean that he actually did anything wrong, according to him. There was a message that I liked. Um, is it in this? It was. Let me see if I can find it real, really quick because it was unusually poignant for for someone like Kevin. But he, let's see. Um, he called it laundering. Because what you do, all these, like, there's, people cannot associate with the forum, right? There's a, there's like a politician, I, I don't even have notes on this, but there's a politician who came out and said something like, oh, you read the Kiwi Farms? I, I go there to read up on trans transgender news. And they had, like, actual news articles written about how this politician name-dropped the Kiwi Farms. And it's a woman that uses the website for one reason, to learn about things that you cannot learn about anywhere else on the Internet, which is transgender shit. Not extremism at all to, re to, to be in a part of a community, a, a sub-community on the forum to uh, talk about shit that is a problem for women that you cannot talk about anywhere else. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't even want to, I don't even want to name them because if I, if I name them on this show in a positive way, uh, then they're, they're in for even more shit. So it, someone out there said this and it caused a fuss. Um, but what happens is, is because so many people who are, you know, woke, they have clean reputations and shit, use the site for information. Information from the site ends up in a bunch of different like news sources that are considered reputable, even though they, they're primarily sourced from the forum. And Kevin called that laundering. And I like that. It is. You're, you're taking all this dirty laundry that we have and you're laundering it to be something that can be presentable on your advertiser friendly bullshit platform. I, I it, it does frustrate me how much, um, credit we lose out on because people can't even like say oh, by the way i took this from the kiwi farms yeah this whole this whole hour-long documentary that i put together half of the shit that i'm reading i literally just got from one place like they don't even bother to say that the only person i remember well there's a couple people but i remember pewdiepie um sourced the forum for some stuff related to better help and that's like the the most prominent we've ever been um used as like a as like a referral for anything and it, it it um it endears me a lot to people when they give credit to the site because it's it's not fair how much effort people put into collecting information for the forum and then they're completely you know ignored. People just steal the shit that they that they found and that they archived and that they um, put together and they just like pass it off on their bullshit uh, commentary channel without a word to where they got it from. Just uh. Yeah, Cecil and Toad McKinley both did them too. PewDiePie has. Um, 
but mainstream Time Warner publications won't. In fact, uh, a CNN reporter messaged me, and I'll see if I can find the email real quick. CNN emailed me. It's a genuine email from warnermedia.com. And she asked, Hello, my name is Claire Duffy. I'm a reporter with CNN Business. Online extremist researchers have identified Kiwi Forums as one of the platforms that have been used to distribute the video of Saturday's mass shooting in Buffalo, as well as the writings purportedly done by the shooter. Wanted to see if Kiwi Farms has any comment on that or if the platform has done anything to restrict the spread of that content. Thank you, Claire. To which I reply, hello. The video originated from Twitch.tv, a subsidiary of Amazon. I assume if it's safe to air through the through Jeff Bezos's platforms, it's safe to host. Thanks, Josh. And uh, surprisingly, that quote has not been used in any CNN publication to my knowledge. Um, but they did quote me on on this. I I think it was the, the the Guardian quoted me on this, but they didn't even. It just says they quoted this part um, that we are quote an American company. The United States has laws. Blah blah blah. They didn't actually say Kiwi Farms anywhere in the article. They like referenced us indirectly. It's crazy. I feel like I, I said in the for, like the forum thread. That if I was anyone else, I might get a big head over the fact that people are literally fucking afraid to say the name of my stupid-ass drama website. But anyways. Uh, Kevin Gibbs on a alt account, says, Not into baby fur whatsoever, but the shit that they get from newly legally able to drink aged terminally online furries is ridiculous. But it's pedo bitch- How's that? Wait, let me let me try this again. It's written in like Twitter retard, but that's pedophile, bitch. How, that's two consenting adults, and when it's consenting adults, it's no longer my business or anyone else's. Uh, it's pretty fucking weird and embarrassing. The shit we get, lol. Oh, so Kevin is the baby fur, and this just replying to a baby, a honorary baby fur defender. Um. Yeah, God, who could imagine why people just turning 18 would look at baby fur shit and think, wow, that's fucking disgusting. Could it be that they haven't been groomed yet? They haven't been exposed to it enough on Discord to, to be adjusted, used to seeing pictures like that? Could that be why? Um, oh, okay, and this is Kevin's continua continuation of his fight to get his passport changed to female. And he complains that on the instructions for changing the gender marker on your U.S. passport, they mention that they can't guarantee the change will be respected in other countries. And I'm just wondering what the fuck that even looks like. It says here you're an F, but we say you're an M and therefore question marks. Like, I understand why they have to say that to some extent the new rule where you just put MF or X without any documentation, documentation proving you're allowed to isn't done anywhere. But it's just a letter. Who's going to do what when they supposedly refuse to accept it? I can answer this, actually. If you go to a country that uh, is concerned about the welfare of their children and you show them a passport and you say, hi, I'm a woman, they're going to think, uh, sir, this, docu this document says that you're supposed to be a woman, but you're clearly a man. So we're going to turn you away at the border because your, your documentation does not match up uh, what we see with our, with our own two eyes right in front of us. Uh, and then he's arguing about Peter Coffin, but I don't care about that. And this is the latest picture. So just imagine your name is Abdul and you're, and you're in Pakistan and this lovely creature hands you a passport that says female and you're just staring there with that Tucker Carlson face of like disbelief where you're thinking like, wait a second, do I let this in? Do I let this in? Is this a woman? It says it says F on my pass on the passport, but I I just see I just see a man. What what do I do? And then he has to he has to do the finger thing with the guy sitting next to him, and they start you know jerk a jerking at each other. And like what what do I do? The document is, in reality are completely incongruous. And he's like fuck it. We we have to call in our supervisor, and then the guy the federal police agent comes in and looks at it and says eh. Do we want to deal with this? Do we want to deal with the, the paperwork of turning of turning this around and having to put them on a different plane back to the U.S.? That's the conversation that gets had when you go to a country that hasn't been completely mind-raped by the West yet. 
And that's the, that's the tranche update. Um, I think there is other some stuff from the other people on tranche, but Kevin Kevin is the real breadwinner here. I guess actually, you know, what? I'll just show a picture of the tranche, a little bit of an update, because apparently they've been doing work on it. Let's see. So this is a picture of. Let me just open this up. So this is a picture of them out in the field. And this is a picture, and this is loading very slowly because they use big ass images. And this is a picture of their living situation. Yeah, it looks like radio equipment just out in the, the middle of nowhere. Oh no! There's literally like they they pick like the worst possible. And this is just the out the the animals just laying out in the field, but there's no grass. Like they can't graze out there because it's it's badlands. They picked like the shittiest part of Colorado to set this up. And uh, oh, those are dead generators that they just have stacked up. That's what that's for. So that's your tranche update. This is where they this is this is their plan to get away from transphobes. They're setting up a utopia where they live in perfect harmony with animals. I'm not showing anything. Oh, I'm a fucking retard. Sorry. I had my my other thing up. <sighs> animals in the field. And uh, this is their dead generators. So, dead generators, and this is the animals. They're freshly shorn and they're wearing their coats. Um, so I guess it's kind of cold out there. But yeah, there's not a, there's not like a fucking thing for them to eat. There's just shit everywhere. Very sad. All right. Okay. So, how do I how do I want how do I want to broach this subject? This is actually really fucking vile. You're, a couple of you are gonna get mad at the internet. So, I'll just read this at first. Uh, this is from R M T F. Oh my God! I'm breastfeeding my daughter. I've been working with a lactation consultant and my general practitioner for several months now to induce lactation. And in this last month have started to actually produce some milk, but it still doesn't feel real. My wife gave birth on Thursday and we finally had a chance to come home from the hospital and sleep uh, and actually compose myself. But for the last few days, our daughter has been latching to and feeding from both of us. I'm so excited. There was a part of me that was irrationally afraid that the baby would reject me for not being her real mom, and I'm so glad to see that little voice proven wrong. So this is a picture of a male-to-female transsexual with artificially hormone-induced lactation breastfeeding a newborn infant. Here's a second one. Uh, this is just natural breastfeeding from a real wo woman, according to uh, YouTube, so nothing wrong with me showing this, right? Cyber Taylor asks or says technological advancement was a is a blessing, and these are all these deleted transphobic shit. All the red posts are deleted stuff. Women are told to be cautious taking women or taking aspirin when breastfeeding. Yet y'all are applauding someone being pumped with synthetic chemicals to induce lactation is beyond appalling. Look at this. This this person is for whatever reason complete falsely conflating medication and life-saving hormones these trans folks need their their hormones to induce lactation uh they don't need aspirin women don't need aspirin when they're pregnant they don't need aspirin they don't need caffeine they don't need anything like that but these are life-saving hormones this other turf cunt down here says right it's ridiculous that there's no concern for the child here and that people who aren't even being vile or transphobic get downvoted for asking genuine questions. It's obvious OP cares more about their own comfort and fulfillment than the baby. And this got negative 10 points because obviously it's concern trolling. She says, oh, you know, people who aren't being transphobic, but this is clearly transphobic because uh, she does not care about the baby or the comfort and fulfillment more than the baby. Um... Oh, this person says, okay, I know you don't like saying, my God, you're so brave, but this is genuinely brave. Some people are not going to like this. But you know what? As long as your kid is happy and healthy, you're doing a great job, and all the haters can go fly a kite. Congratulations to you and your wife. 
Uh, they say, yeah, I've been getting a lot of hate comments and DMs from this, but not fun, but they can pan sound. Pan, pound sand. I might be dyslexic. I should get tested. Okay, this is the great post. Adi Shakti says, congratulations. That's so beautiful. I hope to do the same for my own future children one day. Just wondering, have your doctor and the other people that you're working with test for any nutritional differences between your milk and what is typical, quote unquote, typical for a cis woman? Just something I'm curious about, especially since I would want to make sure that my baby gets everything they need for my own breast. Uh, Admiral Fisticups, the OP, replies, there are no nutritional differences. The same hormones cause the same processes. The only difference is that because I started HRT at 25, I have less memory tissue, so I'll make less milk. Uh, this post was removed within 11 seconds, and this post saying, stop lying, was deleted. <laughs> uh, Vodka with Coke says, oh my god, that's absolutely amazing. <laughs> so, uh, this got posted on Evil Turf Twitter. Charlotte says, this poor child, this is an experiment on an infant who cannot consent. This is abuse for validation, and it's disgusting. Um, now, there is concerns about this because the hormone um, that they are using to induce lactation, I think it's called progesterone. I could be wrong. I think that's the general HRT medication. It's probably somewhere in this, but uh, it's illegal. It's not, it's not legal in the United States to import this drug. It's not approved by the FDA. Um, I think it's approved for use in cattle. I could be wrong even about that. It's, it's generally not allowed for people to take this, this medication. Uh, Dom Peridone, uh, not allowed, um, not permitted by the FDA. So he's illegally importing this to induce lactation by self-prescribing his own dosage. And in uh, response to concerns that he might be arrested for this, says... Thankfully, I live in a very progressive area, and the staff at the hospital was mostly just thrilled that I was an excited, involved, and supportive partner to my wife. Um, and I think side effects for it include, like, heart attack. Oh, here. How about this post? Uh, an evil turfy bitch says, What in the hands made tale is this? This baby is getting no nutritional value from this. D is for delightful, says fuck off turf. OP literally, OP literally has an entire team of doctors that know what they're doing. Take your bullshit somewhere else. The turf replies, are you kidding? This is literal child abuse. What is wrong with you all? I'm all for people living their true selves, but this is not right. There's no way that this is safe or healthy for the baby. D is for a delightful response saying, please explain in detail how her breast milk is different from any cis woman's. Cite your sources, go into detail, give me actual scientific evidence. As a med student, I'm absolutely fascinated to hear you explain the difference. Do you think there's a bad, evil XY magic in the milk? Uh, and one, two, three, cheese, negative three points deleted, replies saying, Retired physician Dr. Maja Bowen says she had several concerns about the practice. What comes out of a man's nipple is not mother's milk, but a watery substance devoid of antibodies and nutrients that are found in a mother's milk, the composition of which changes as the baby grows up, which is true. Um, the, the hormones that cause lactation actually change after a baby is born, and the baby gets a different... Um, composition of, of nutrients and stuff in the milk as in, in the months following birth. So, and I, and, and I know that cause I grew up around women. Um, but when you just like shoot cow hormones into your, your eyeball and you say, you say, I'm a real woman now. Um, you're not getting those finely tuned evolutionary signals to induce lactation like a woman does. Uh, Dr. Bowen says that the few previous studies done on trans identified males who have induced lactation show a po paucity of evidence the discharge is nutritious or equivalent of a mother's breast milk. Men are not women or mothers. They are not designed to breastfeed. So the question is, why is this man doing this when the baby has a mother and access to both actual breast milk and formula? Dr. Bowen also notes that there are questions about the man's intentions. Well, there are rights to be uh, concerned about intentions because in this person's um, blog, so this is the breastfeeder's blog, uh, or actually, no, this is... I thought that this was this person, but it's not because this is too recent. This is from 2017. Oh, it is the same person. 
Okay, no, this, okay, I have this right. It's in my notes. Um, this is the same person. It's just from previous. Uh, issue 2017 from the author of, of The Breastfeeder. My first time breastfeeding my daughter. Breastfeeding is freaky. Not the sucking bit. You're reading The Stranger, so odds are you've had a titty sucked at some point in your life. No, it's because when my baby attached to my breast, there was an incredible chemical cascade that ran through my entire body like lightning. Imagine the most electric thing a partner has ever done to you, then multiply it by 10. I could feel my brain rewiring, creating pathways that would permanently connect me to my child. And yeah, I kind of got off on it. Don't judge. So literally, explicitly sexually arousing to have the infant latch to the male breast and derive water, watery, non-nutritious non um immuno beneficial liquid from them and sh this is, actually you know what? i'll read it all fuck it i've not read this entire thing but let me get a sip of water i want to tell you the story of the first time i breastfed my daughter but in order to tell you that story i'll have to take a step back a bit i met my wife two and a half years ago and 2700 miles ago in virginia we raced from let's keep this casual to let's get married, have kids, and move to Seattle in about 10 months. At almost 40, we knew we couldn't wait too long. Also, clearly, waiting wasn't our strong suit. So within a year of landing in Seattle, my wife was pregnant with our first child. Uh, once you're pregnant, or in our case, well before, you start obsessing over all the ways you can fail at being a parent. Take breastfeeding. Everyone says breast is the best. Figuring four boobs were better than two... With me being unable to contribute to the physical burden of having our child by carrying her, I started looking for ways I could get more active um, helping with breastfeeding. We eventually discovered the Newman Goldfarb, and for whatever reason, my browser has glitched out on the name Goldfarb. Uh, th oh, the Newman Goldfarb Protocol, so it's named after Goldfarb, uh, which has allowed non-gestational parents to produce milk. One obstacle down. Oh, also, I'm transgender. Yeah, we know. We figured that out. There's a weird but surprisingly common notion that trans women breasts aren't quote-unquote real. We all know that's that's not true, chat. Come on. Um, uh, when I told people about my plan to breastfeed, the most common reaction from both lay people and medical professionals was, wait, you can do that. But I had not – but had I not mammary glands – if you filled me with prolactin, would I not leak? Ew. We started the protocol in earnest under the guidance of a queer lactation consultant because Seattle. And a week before my partner was due, I was happily pumping more than one ounce. Of I'm going to gag. I'm like, I'm, I feel it in my throat. Like when you're drunk or something and you're like having to, to suppress throwing up. It, it, this is actually fucking nauseating. I used to joke that my transition was a success when my dysphoria was replaced with the standard issue body hate that comes with being a woman. <laughs> Nobody hates women more than a transgender male to female. Nobody has a lower opinion of what it is to be a woman than, than a male to female. Nick Fuentes lives in the fucking shadow of the misogyny that is harbored in a, in a Tim. Fucking nuts. How can you write that? We're constantly told that our primary value as women is decorative, that failing to be attractive is the worst crime we can commit, but our bodies aren't just decorative, they're functional, and we can seek validation in that function too. That's so telling. If I can't be attractive, I can just have a, I can just abduct an infant and breastfeed it, and that'll make me a woman. That's fucking, this is insanity. I, I don't know how people can root for this. How, how does a woman read this shit and think anything except like the, the kind of primal fear that you get in the caveman part of your brain that, that hears like a, a bear outside his tent? Like, how do you, how do you avoid that feeling? Um, lactating changed how I saw my body. Having breasts was great, but using them to feed another human being, that was magic. Speci specifically, it was mom magic. I might have been my daughter's sperm donor, but breast... Oh, my God. This is fucking psychotic. This is nuts. I wasn't prepared for this. It's really dense, too, like in the crazy. Uh, I might have been my daughter's sperm donor, but breastfeeding was how I, was knew I, how I knew I was going to be a mom. It validated my womanhood as much as any surgery ever could. So cut to the happy ending. My wife gives birth. We come home from the hospital. We trade off breastfeeding duties. Uh, 
Everyone gets enough sleep and the three of us live happily ever after. Ha ha. Here's what actually happened. I got a sick a week before the due date and had to discontinue the protocol. The baby didn't come on schedule, so we induced two days later, followed by a grueling three-day labor, uh, labor that ended in an emergency section. Wow, who would have thought that this natural, healthy way of bringing a life into the world would go awry? At that point, I had gone from producing an ounce of milk to only a, uh, a cubic centimeter or two. And my partner's milk was going to take days to come in. The lactation consultants in the hospital were uninformed and singularly uncooperative. Yeah, every single person was fucking disgusted at the Frankenstein uh, project that was unfolding in front of them. We had to start supplementing with formula. A few weeks later, we both gave up on breastfeeding and switched to formula completely. So if our plan was an abject failure, why am I gushing about breastfeeding? Because when they pulled my daughter free of my wife's body, I was the first one to hold her. I took her back to the hospital room and did what any mom would do. The first thing literally rips that sucker out of the fucking, the, the Vagumba, takes him into the back room and, and says, suck, suck on it. Suck on my breast, infant, one minute old infant, suck. And that tiny, perfect creature latched onto me and got what sustenance my body could provide and was content. Um, I was in that moment sitting in the hospital room nursing my newborn daughter for the first time, and then I became a mom. The moment created an unbreakable bond that will last us for the rest of our lives. And yeah, that it took so little to do was, in retrospect, freaky as hell. The failure of the breastfeeding plan, my wife and I had so carefully constructed was disappointed, but I'll never say for even a moment that I regret any of it. Selin Habiti says, that's so amazing. That's something I've been secretly hoping to do one day. Congratulations. Let me know if you have any questions. And this is the anime avatar is asking for tips. Oh. Okay, chat. There's... Oh, fuck, I already ruined it by showing pictures. I guess I, I just... I I guess I have no choice. I have to, I have to just break it out. Chat. Guess what? Guess what, Chad? Think of it like an ethnicity. I was born Jewish and will always be ethnically Jewish even if I don't practice or identify as such. The, I, I I love Israel more than anyone north of of the Mediterranean, right? So this is a great accomplishment for the Jewish people, including the, the gold, whatever the fuck protocol, gold farb protocol. It's just an all-around success that we have planted in the minds of um, retarded people <laughs> in the West. Okay. That's the end of that story. I hope you all have enjoyed um, like I said, the real danger with it is is that you have a drug, which is not allowed in the U.S. because it causes heart complications, and they're taking it, and then because the breasts don't produce any actual nutritional value, it's just going to contain the drug. It's going to contain the hormones, and then you're feeding hormones that cause health complications to a one-minute-old child the second that it's born. You're, you're force-feeding it this, this concoction. And that's that's the real harm. All the dis, you know the disgusting things um, set aside. This is like the fear, the innate fear that we have, um, or rather the innate complications that exist for this. Uh, okay, let's end on a lighter note. Let's spend the second hour uh, talking about our old faithfuls, not trans related. Nick Martin, who is a by the way, actually, you know what. I'm going to go off script. There's something I want to show you guys. Nick, This is the last thing that Nick Fuentes tweeted or posted on, on the Fediverse. Not on the Fediverse. The, um, on Telegram. You guys, name his band. Uh, I'll tell you. I'm gonna, I'll read out some good ones in chat. Name this band. This is his last picture. The last vid, uh, thing sent out on Telegram. If you're only listening, this is a... Um, 
picture of Nick Fuentes and two twinks in a above ground parking garage, like a multi layered one, multi floor parking garage. Weezer, Blow Patrol, Being Gay, The Dancing Israelis, The Cap Boys, Weezer 2, The Manlets, Butt Squad, Little Nipples, Josh and the Pussycats, <laughs> Josie and the Boy Pussycats. <laughs> I'll tell you what I came up with. The, the first thing that I I thought when I saw this was, it's uh it's a it's a rapper. Okay, he's a rapper. His name is Nicky J. And the title of this debut album is, guys, where did we park? Because <laughs> it just looks like they're in a parking garage where they don't know where the fuck their car is at, and they're they're looking around trying to find it. <laughs> that's that's mine. That's my take. I hope. <laughs> Maybe he'll roll with it. Maybe I'll get royalties when he when he's a millionaire. But anyways, Nick Martin. I don't know who the fuck this is. Let's pull him up. Probably ADL related. Uh, I write and edit The Informant, original reporting and intelligence on hate and extremism. Senior fellow at the W State Center. Profile picture by Victor G. So this guy is a journo scum. Kind of looks like Patrick Tomlinson, um, but also like a lesbian. Uh, writes for the informant and does things on hate and extremism. And he says, I can't imagine why this completely random account would block me today. I'm sure it's not a white nationalist Nick Fuentes evading a Twitter ban, especially not after Gab paid him all that money. Torba, bam, bam, bam. Torba says, oh, here, Nikki, I'll give you $20,000 to promote our dead gay fucking Twitter clone. And he's like, okay, I'll take the money. And now back on Twitter immediately. Like, uh, fuck Gab. Gab shit. Fuck the boomers. I don't want to be there. And so what, what's, what's even more interesting than this, like, okay, whatever. Some ADL guy is, like, uh, making fun of Nick Fuentes. This guy n named Mark Pitkovich has a screenshot from the Kiwi Farms verifying that this is Nick's Twitter account. And uh, what I find really funny about uh, Mark Pitkovich saying this and says that uh, it seems it was a little shout out to his Kiwi Farms detractors who noticed it pretty quickly. Mark, this look at this guy. This guy reads the website. This guy reads the farm. This is your average Kiwi Farms user. You see him? A big fat Jewish man who works for the ADL. That is our target audience. When I when I view my statistics for um, our metrics on the forum, Israel ninety nine percent of traffic, ages forty plus, three hundred pounds. That that <laughs> that is the demographic that I see the most of. <laughs> Literally me. I know, right? I feel <laughs> I feel right at home. He's a senior research fellow, Center on Extremism, Anti Defamation League, expert on right wing extremism. I like the word extremism more than extremism. Uh, views expressed here are my own only. Retweets, not my views. And that URL seems busted, sir. You might want to fix that. So uh, I found this exchange very funny. The Eternal Kiwi. <laughs> Uh, and this is also some lighthearted good stuff. Um, Nick Fuentes likes to say that he eats really well. He'll post pictures of his food. I don't know why. I don't know why people do this. I don't know why people do this in general. But Nick Fuentes and Ralph love like posting pictures of their food, and it's like, why? Nobody cares. The only picture of food that I've ever posted for for my audience was the time that I hand grew banana peppers and then pickled them myself so that I could make my own bread and assemble a uh, Subway sandwich to fill a void that I've that I've not had uh, filled in, in many years. That's 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 the appropriate time to share pictures of food. Uh, Nick Fuentes has posted on this old account. Shitting diarrhea 180 barf into toilet. I turned groiper green for a moment. I haven't eaten like 12 hours and I just had one steak taco. I guess I'm just feeling lousy. It's called food poisoning Nick. He posted this, and this depressing fucking whatever this is. It looks like a hot dog, I guess. With That is like a bag of frozen french fries put on a baking sheet and warmed up with Velveeta Kraft single slices cheese melted on top of it. And he posted this saying, late night stack. 2 a.m., by the way. I'm the one that took that screenshot. That was 2 a.m. his time when he made this post. So he's up at 2 a.m. eating this shit. And it's like, can you not fucking sleep? Is this what your life is like because you don't want a wife and your boyfriend just dumped you? Is 
Why would you share this? Here's another one. Imagine eating this good. This is where the thread title comes from. And this is like a depressing looking burger and just overcooked fries. Those are burned. The fry, the, the, I, I work fast food. I, I mentioned this many times. I've worked fast food. I worked um, from when I was 18 to 19 at a Whataburger. And when a fry looks like that, it means that the fry grease hasn't been changed out in forever. Because you put something into a fryer, the, um, the edges carbonize and the little carbon particles float off into the oil and it darkens over time the first batch of fries that are cooked look like they're not cooked because there's it's pure oil and it doesn't brown at all and then there's a period of time where they come out looking golden and perfect and then after the grease has not been changed in many days many batches of fries they start looking disgusting and burned like that so he's eating burned ass fucking fries from a place that doesn't give a shit and can't clean their grease um, and it says, imagine eating this good, and that looks bad. I don't know what the fuck that is. It looks like chicken. It's like strips of chicken on like a loaf of bread. Imagine eating this good roast beef sandwich, and and more crinkle cut fries from a bag. That's I mean that 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 is from a bag, a frozen bag of French fries. Um not home cooked at all like surely they're like he claims that he has a net worth over a million dollars surely you can find a place that makes their own fucking french fries bro and then i guess this is taco bell i can't fault him for eating taco bell taco bell's fucking tasty growing boy needs his food though just not a people no I mean, I, I can't blame him for not knowing how to cook i mean look at this shit this is, literally looks like diarrhea I would not. I would not eat this. This literally looks like diarrhea. What the fuck is it? Sour. What is below that? Is that sour cream below the beans? Why would you eat this? Oh, and this is this is probably my all-time favorite Nick Nick Nicker moment. This is my favorite OG Nicker moment. He goes to McDonald's as he does, and he opens. He takes his burger, and he opens it. And he opens it upside down and he looks at it and thinks, Hmm, why is my burger flat? <laughs> why, why does it not look like burger? So he takes two pictures of this and puts it in a tweet and tags McDonald's and asks, what the fuck is wrong with my burger? Not realizing it's literally just upside down and you can just flip it upside the right side around and it will be just fine. He, it doesn't even occur to him. And he's, he's genuinely lost and confused and hurt that his food is wrong because he doesn't know that it's upside down. Uh, but, you know, we all, we all root for Nick Valentez to save the white, the white race. Uh, he, he, he's the man for the job. There's no doubts whatsoever in my mind that he can pull off his aspirations. Um, and that being said, there is Ralph. A couple things have happened in the Ralph sphere. Ralph has been very angry this week, and he has been violently seething at absolutely everyone. I posted a clip that I took down after a day. Um, where, do, where is it? I'll just play it real quick if I can. Uh, Monkey.mp4. Let me open this and I'll play it. Okay. You got, it's already being spoiled. I got I to gotta hurry up. Monkey in P4. Okay. This is this is the my Ralph's finest moment. Bitch. Just pure rage at absolutely nothing. In in incoherent, pointless monkey noises. Truly impressive. Um, however, not as impressive as this remix, which I, I think was credited to T-Clips or to Cecil Mc. Actually, I think it was Cecil McFly was that what is what it was credited to. And I'll, I'll play that as well. It's just so spot on, just so perfect. Like, yeah, he does sound like Aerosmith. That's, <laughs> that's fucking amazing. <laughs> uh, so spot on. I, again, I think that was Cecil, but I don't, I don't know for sure who came up with that. 
So Ralph keeps on giving. He's a content king, as he likes to say. Uh, now, he goes on a show. He has very few shows he can come on to, but apparently he has a pre-existing friendship or you know association with this woman named Chrissy Meyer. Uh, and he goes on, and they talk for a little bit, and then it gets to the Super Chats. And Kiranu tips $5 and asks, Pull up the pill stream clip where Ralph tells his mom to hitchhike in the summer heat to her dialysis appointment. And I want to say... Felted by a pink anime rabbit. I don't know, because I never saw just block the, the fucking loser, and I really never watched oh, anything they did. I want to capture the, the precise moment. Mean, I, saw that a couple times in the what this? I don't really know. The whole felt is like the noise. Uh, it's ass fucking. It's a lot of this. Another man dead. Hitchhike in the sand. Okay, here. This Kiranu pull up the pill stream clip where Ralph tells his mom to hitchhike in the summer heat to her dialysis appointment. <laughs> really? <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, well, I don't know uh, exactly what he means by the by the pill stream clip, but uh, why didn't he send it? Actually, I want to I want to ask you guys real quick on chat. Do you think Chrissy? Uh, Chrissy was laughing at Ralph's mom abuse. I'll frame, phrase it like that. Do you think? Do you think that she was laughing at him? The the super chat made her laugh because she knew that he was an asshole, and she was laughing at him. Or do you think any other reason for her to laugh besides deliberately trying to provoke the fuck out of Ralph? Exactly. I'll replay it. Really? That's good. This is my the summer heat to her dialysis appointment. <laughs> really? That's kind of funny. Yeah, well, I don't know uh, exactly what he means by the by the pill shoot. All right, only two more. K Max does the kind of funny that like. Funny, by the way, is that funny? The the idea is kind of funny that like. You have any clips of your dead mom when you were arguing with her? Do you think that's funny? So he takes it very much the wrong way. Where I mean. I, I mean, I almost kind of feel like she she was laughing at him. And it just, she didn't she didn't realize what, because, you know, when you're reading Super Chats or whatever, it's like you, you read it aloud as you go along, and then afterwards it kind of hits you what you just read. And maybe that, like, surprised her. People laugh when they're surprised, right? I don't know. It kind of feels like she knew what it was referencing. That's why she laughed. Um, but Ralph, of course, blows up after this. And... We have some clips of this, courtesy of Gary Gray. And I'll play these. These are much shorter. Uh, he blows up at her for like 16 full minutes, and I don't know. I probably will not play all of that. A lot of things, a lot of uh, fake stories about uh, Amazon wish lists and, and stuff like that. I have an Amazon wish list. What's Are wrong you? with that? Yeah, but nobody ever sends me anything from it. Nothing. If you get something out of it, I got something out of my purchases, so... Chrissy, uh, we were informed. Listen to that again. He ever sends me anything from it. Nothing. If you get something out of it, I got something out of my purchases. So, Chrissy, uh, we were informed. That is like a direct reference to Alice, because Alice made the allegations that he bought shit from her Amazon wish list, and then she didn't want to put out, so he just like mouth raped her. That I mean, this is like a, a admission. I'm pretty anything sure. From it. Nothing. If you get something out of it, I got something out of my purchases. So. Chrissy, uh -huh. we were informed. Like that's definitely like a, a tacit admission, whether or not he intended to say that or not. You know how he gets though; he gets all angry and he stops. He loses control of himself. Someone said, and "I'm gonna scroll up so I can find it." He thinks Ebola cereal. I think this was a gay op by her and Vinti. That's a good theory. Um, I kind of, I, I almost agree with Ralph because there's a part where when he talks about flamenco. Um, he, he makes fun of flamenco for a bit and she looks uncomfortable and he says, I bet you she was uncomfortable because she had been talking to flamenco because flamenco joins the stream immediately after. And it's like, I can kind of see that Chrissy has this idea. I'll let the, the rage hog come on. I'll read super chats. He'll probably get triggered. And then if he blows up at me, you know, we'll do the, the girls stream, which they did. And we'll all laugh at Ralph together. And then uh, I'll show up on Mercata's stream and it'll just be like a good way to get like clout. Because it's it's surefire. Like if you wanna if you wanna get internet clout right now, just invite Ralph onto your stream and wait for him to like lose his shit at something stupid, and then just use that to get like clicks and views. I mean, it's a great it's a great idea. I'm not even like uh, like I I make fun of Ralph 
for views, right? <laughs> I mean, I enjoy it, but uh, if if everyone hated me talking about Ralph, I definitely wouldn't watch that. So it's it's a good idea. That's get so talk. Nah, I can see it. Flamenco just like says, "Oh, you're having a Ralph one. Try and get him to blow up. You know, read super chats or something. It'll be funny." And then she's like, "Okay, sure, whatever." And then he does. He, he falls for it, and then she gets to make fun of him more and talk about how small his dick is with a bunch of women who all laugh at how small his dick is. And then she goes on the Ricardo stream, and it's like, sure, why not? I, I, I mean, uh, I, you know, what, what are the three the three prongs of conspiracy? Is is like uh, m motivation, opportunity, and and capability? It's like, sure, perfect. Uh, that that meets my criteria for a, a valid schizo theory. Kiranu pull up the pill stream clip where Ralph tells his mom to hitchhike in the summer heat to her dialysis appointment. <laughs> really? That's kind of funny. Yeah, well, I don't know uh, exactly what he means by the by the pill stream clip, but uh, why didn't he send it? Actually, he could have just. That's true. Yeah. All right, only two more. K Max does the online left. Feed is that funny? By the way, is that funny? The the idea is kind of funny that like. Do you have any clips of your dead mom when you were arguing with her? Do you think that's funny? Do I have a clip of her? Yeah. Do you have some clips where you were talking shit to your dead mom? Would you think it was funny if I was to pull that up? Maybe depending on the clip. If it was I funny, you, I don't think you'd probably laugh if I was to pull that up and start talking about it. Take money. I just I don't have any Take clips money to sit here and talk about it. I don't think you would think that was too funny. I feel like I touched a nerve, and I didn't mean to. I just no, think, I'm like, just there you. aren't any clips. Yeah, hey, I'm just mind. asking you. If I had that clip and I pulled if it up you right you had now, a clip of my I mom. Five fucking dollars to pull that clip up. Would you think it was funny? It's, if it was a funny clip, then. If they paid me five fucking dollars, and they said, hey, Chrissy, here's your dead mom. Here's you talking shit to her. Would you think that's funny? Well, I, I've never talked shit I'm to her like you. I'm asking you a, a direct question. If such a clip existed. If if I had talked shit to my clip mom. It could exist. I think you probably talked a lot of shit to your mom, actually. Why would you think that? I mean, I have no reason to not think that. I think everybody probably has some unguarded moments with their family. Talk shit to What the fuck kind of line of question is this? Like, I'm sure that you've talked shit with your mom. Like, I don't think most people do, bro. I don't think <laughs> I don't think most people have told their mom that they can find their own way. They can take their own fucking Uber trip to dialysis. No. For laughing about that shit to my, to my face. That's what I think. I can't tell if you're joking or not. I'm not joking at all. I'm being dead okay. serious. Well, I don't. I also don't know if what that person sent was real or not. I was just okay, thinking well, the I'm idea of not, it is I'm funny. I'm not joking. I'm being real fucking serious right here live on air. Moms okay, are what sacred. I thought what I was saying was funny. It was the idea that you would tell some like that a person would tell their mom to like go into the sun, like go out in the summer. Like I was just Well, I'm telling you, I sat here long enough for your faggot super chats is what I'm telling you. And I didn't appreciate okay. the last one. I didn't appreciate your fucking faggot laughter. And I'm really about done. So what else do you have for me? Okay. Uh I I wasn't trying to like Oh, here's here's the great thing. There's like a, a Mexican pig standoff here where he's just going to like disrupt her stream now. Like that's his decision. And he refuses to leave. Like instead of just saying like, fuck it, I'm not going to sit here and have you laugh at me like that. I'm just going to go. I don't need to elevate your show by being here. He decides that he's just going to stick around and holler until she decides to either kick him or end it on her own terms, which is very strange make you upset I don't, I don't know i feel like we there's some confusion or no there's not confusion i'm i'm being real just direct with you okay like okay i think you're taking what i said like a little too seriously well that's your opinion i don't think so i think that you thought you know it's all fun and games and it's all you know comedy routine and i'm telling you it's not i'm telling you you sat here and you got personal one too many times, and I'm telling you, fuck you. That's what I'm saying live on air. I, I got personal? Yeah. How Me, did I get you. personal? Yeah, you, fucker. Yeah, you. How did I get personal? I don't know you personally like that. It, it, okay, Sugar Dust says this is uncomfortable, to be honest. Uh, women don't like this bad air of, like, confrontation. So she's like, oh, I didn't mean to, like, piss you off. I'm, like, I didn't mean to. And she's trying to defuse the situation in this conversation, and Ralph won't let it be. I guess he wants, like, an apology or something. 
Um, but she, but she doesn't say I'm sorry. She just says like I didn't mean to upset you because she does. She's not apologizing for reading the super chat. She she doesn't want to. Um, but she just feels bad that she's upset him. Kind of like in the way like you would upset a child. Like you know, a woman says something and it offends a kid, and you're like, oh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings that way. Uh, that's why it feels right. so awkward. So how dare you fucking say some shit like that to me on air? For but I wasn't. I was just reading a super chat. Okay. Well, you're, you're being Jack Murphy against Sydney. I don't Watson give a fuck. Shut it. up, cuck. I don't give a fuck, boyfriend. Get the fuck out of here. You're nobody. Shut the fuck up. What a charmer. What a charmer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I tell it how it is. I genuinely think there was a confusion here because, like. If I wanted to have you come on here just to like make fun of you, I I would have done it right away. Like I literally just, you and I are cool. We're having a conversation. Like I genuinely think that you maybe misheard something or thought I was trying to be shitty when I honestly wasn't. Well, that's your statement. I think I've pretty much spoke for myself here, and so people can just take it how they want. Like, I do. I actually do have a story. So I did a road. Okay, at that point, she just describes that she, um, her mom died of cancer, and someone told a joke that was, like, really mean-spirited. And I kind of, I kind of want to just skip the end, because there's something that, it's basically just that. It's really awkward. And then he says, like, I ain't gonna fucking leave, bitch. Fuck you. And then he leaves. And then, his next stream, he decides to watch over the entire interview, like this part, and pause it every, literally every second. He pauses it, and it makes, like, he does the squealing noise and shit. And then, um, <clears throat> like, talking to a volatile, retarded uncle, she directly compared it to that after Ralph left. Yeah, pretty much. He does his own stream, and then, and this is after the Chrissy Mayer stream where she talks to Brittany Venti and they make fun of his penis together. Uh, this is Ralph's like intro to his stream. These whores are scared. By God, don't ever call them to their face. Oh, you're unfunny. Oh, you're a bitch. Oh, you're talking shit. Shut up, bitch. Shut up, bitch. Fuck you, whore. Oh, you don't like that, huh? Oh, when you get caught out to your face? That's why Vindy didn't like it. Oh, oh, you didn't like a man telling you to your fucking face that you're a whore? That you're a fucking whore? Bitch, I will tell you to your fucking face. Do you understand me, bitch? I'm telling you to your fucking face right fucking now, bitch. You're a fucking whore. You're a no good scumbag fucking whore. Do you understand me, Brittany fucking Vinti, bitch? Do you get it now, whore? I'm not stuttering. Am I fucking stuttering, you no good two-bit bitch? Fuck you. This is the best part right here. Hey. Instant, instant playback. Hold up. He he's done hollering, right? He sits down, and he okay. What? Okay, actually, he sits down earlier. This is him hollering right here, right? And then he's like, "Ooh, man, all that standing was so tiring." And now he's just standing there. Watch this. I'm gonna mute it. Can I mute it real quick? There we go. Watch his face. He's like having a stroke. Like, where am I? What am I doing? Why am I yelling at the camera? What's what is this place? Am I married to a horse? Why is there a baby in here? And then he decides to yell some more. Um, the all okay. The alternative, by the way, to to him being having a, a stroke is <laughs> I think he's literally just out of breath and he's like catching his breath at this point and he's like what else do I say I've already said bitch and horror 50 times 
Uh, how about let's fucking go? <laughs> this is also one of the best free free streams of Ralph ever taken. Look at this. This is what this man actually looks like. This is this is his face. This is what he he presents himself every time he wakes up in the morning. He looks in the mirror and this is what's looking back at him. What an absolute living fucking nightmare. <laughs> um so yeah, that's that's the Ralph update. The other the other coin to this that I don't have clips for. Uh jeez, I'm I'm debating. I don't know if it's that interesting, but you may not believe you may think I'm exaggerating something if I just like paraphrase it. We'll we'll, we'll decide. Maybe I'll 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 do it just because. Uh you know, at, maybe during the super chat time I'll pull it up and kill some time with it. But So he agreed to a fight with Andy Worski right so keemstar wants to negotiate this fight because he sees that there's money to be made he tells ralph that there are probably twenty thousand subscriptions that could be sold to a pay-per-view to a pay-per-view fight between you and andy worsey you would each make a hundred thousand dollars and the th third hundred thousand dollars would go between like platform fees uh you know i would take my cut xyz there there is money to be made in this fight but you have to take it serious two things he, he has two conditions he says ethan ralph i can make you a hundred thousand dollars for something you've already agreed to do if you can do two things a i need you to take it seriously you have to train. You have to work out. Uh, you can't just go to the fight and take a slug and then fall to the ground. You have to actually put in effort. And then number two, um, if I am going to sell this event to a serious platform, you know, a serious producer, you have to clean up a little bit. And just a little bit, just between now and when the fight happens, which means two things. No, no N-words. No F words, just those two things. Just drop it out of your vocabulary for a little bit because now when I show people that you want to do a fight, they look you up and they say, oh, this guy is like a, a horrible retard that drops uh, racist and, and homophobic slurs constantly. We can't put him on our platform, even though we're wrestling or foxing or foxing, boxing or whatever the fuck. And, you know, we're like the lowest of the low in terms of like advertisers anyways. Um we can't have someone that like that on the platform. So that's what Keen says. A hundred thousand dollars to exercise a little bit and um and to take the F and the N words out of your vocabulary for just the duration of what it takes for this fight to get done. And Ralph, throughout this thing, reiterates over and over and over again that he will only do it if Jim if Mr. Medicare will come on his show and authorize him to go that time without saying N slurs or F slurs. He says repeatedly that Mr. Medicare and nobody else, Mr. Medicare must allow him to do this because he does not want to be criticized for censoring himself to, to make money. That is his, and he, uh, I couldn't believe it. It's like literally saying like, yeah, sure, I can go to the fight, but I have to ask my dad first. I'm going to go ask my dad, and my dad says it's okay for me to go to this fight. Then I guess I'll go to the fight. Like, do you not have the autonomy to make a $100,000 financial decision uh, yourself? It's, but he says, like, I don't, want, I don't want to look like a cook. I need that Mr. Medicare. I, I don't want to look like I'm beholden to anything. So I'm going to behold myself to Medicare to authorize myself to be beholden to this because it will look better for me somehow to cuck out to Jim versus cucking out to, to Keemstar for $100,000. Allowing Jim to deprive me of $100,000 is more based and, and, and uh, red-pilled than uh, than censoring myself in the most like vague way possible for a couple months to make a hundred thousand dollars it's like are you, like how i know he's got mommy issues because whenever a woman makes fun of him he he goes full rage hog but he also must have like serious daddy issues too where it's like i really need daddy jim to say 
yeah, I- I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, Ralph. Like, as he's laying there and, you know, he's sick from cancer AIDS and, and monkeypox, I think, is <laughs> what they finally determined it is. He's been sick from monkeypox all this time. And he's dying of monkeypox. And Ralph is there. Uh, and he says, Ralph, I never told you this, but you are my favorite Gamergate IBS host. And you've done a great job. I'm real proud of this, this sector that you've built up with your own hard work and entrepreneurial spirit. I don't regret making you internet famous at all. And I, Father, Father Medecker, uh, see your, your accomplishments and your trophies and know that I, I may not have any kids, but I'm proud of you in a way a father would be proud of a son. And he'd be like, shucks, Medecker. That's all ever wants is here. I don't need a hundred thousand dollars from Keemstar. I just needed the slightest little approval from my internet father. This means more to me than anything any of those haters or a log could take from me. And then they would cry and they would hug each other, and Ralph would contract monkeypox, <laughs> and then he would die. That's that's the that's the canonical ending in my head. <laughs> So well, it remains to be seen. I don't think Jim has authorized the fight to happen. So until um, Ralph gets his permission to sign by his internet father, <laughs> the fight's on hiatus. And he keeps saying, like, if, um, it, oh, God, what, what, how did he put it? Oh, the, the N-word and F-slur thing is just a way to back out of the fight. Because Ralph is just so badass andy worski is afraid of ralph so obviously he's looking for a way out of this fight and what's going to happen is he'll just occasionally call someone uh wait wait hold on is this a uh uh hold on give me a second Give me a second. Oh, load. I'm not going to find it. <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, man. Oh, here. He'll just be on his podcast, doing what he does normally, and then accidentally... Or even a dreaded <laughs> One of these. Fuck this. I'm on vlog TV with my fucking hands up. You fucking nigger. 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 It could happen to any of us at any time. So he, he's saying, I can't accept these extremely harsh conditions because... I might just do it on accident, like we all do. And then Andy Worski will take that as an opportunity to say that I bailed out because I'm afraid of him. And I can't allow that to happen at all. So unless my father signs my permission slip, I'm going to have to back out of this $100,000 offer that you put on the table, Keemstar. <laughs> Boomer juice. I've been sleepy recently, so I have to take my boomer juice. Hey, chat. I have a clip of Chantal breaking the scale. Then she runs away. Look, she literally runs away. By the way, the scale says 384 or 348.4 pounds so two pounds under 350 and the funny thing about that is that it's a glass scale that has a maximum weight of 350 and she has a record of doing this buying scales that have a maximum weight below what she knows she's weighed at 
so that she can get on them and be like, look, I'm only 348 pounds. She's closer to 400, but then she can do the scale. But sh she forgot that the glass may not be tempered for weights more than 350. So that's why it fucking breaks. Oh. And she runs because she's embarrassed. That's your Chantal update. She's just been back and forth with Nadir the entire time. Uh, nothing else has happened at all. And that's it, I think, right? Um, did I miss anything, chat? I'll give you this as an opportunity to, to add anything. Otherwise, I'm going to proceed to the Superberries. I'll try to keep it entertaining. Wait, Ralph has put out a, a tweet that I should look at. Uh, Gator says, I'll, oh, oh yeah, I'm not coming back to Twitter for a while. He'll just keep doing it. And that's referring to himself. So he's like openly bragging that he's uh, flagging videos. Because he, in the last couple of days, Gator lost his Twitter account. I think Cecil McFly lost their Twitter account. And the the bunny got flagged on YouTube, but they got flagged for deceptive videos or something. So I don't know if that's related to Ralph or if that's just a coincidence, but there's been, there's been flags and takedowns abound and Ralph at least takes credit for getting, um, Gators Twitter account suspended. So, Oh, Flamenco, Flamenco and Gator, not Cecil. My bad. I have no comment on Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp. That shit is bred in circuses to a fucking T. Anyone watching that shit um, that's not hosting 10,000 viewer live streams and making thousands of dollars off of it, it's a fucking chump. Like, who could possibly give a fuck about that shit? Oh my god, a celebrity and his BPD horror girlfriend are having a tumultuous breakup. Wow, I'm so invested. I love Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp was the, the pirate. Remember when he said, uh, but you have heard of me? That was a great line in those Disney movies. I can't wait to see what, what dirty laundry is to be aired out. Oh my God, she poo-poo in his bed. Blah, 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 blah. Like, no, come on. We talk about serious things here, like rage hogs and... Um, transgender breastfeeding like i just i could not give less of a fuck i don't even know how it's picked up so much energy in, in like m sector right just craziness okay um super chats uh I, I i guess i would appreciate if people stuck around for the super chats i will try I, i've never done everything at the end before so um maybe I can be entertaining. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Let's see. So if you're if you're not interested in the outro song or the super chats, uh, I guess you can leave if you want to break my heart. Okay. Uh, oh god, there's so many of them now because I promised to read them. This guy says, "Do it." This is a YouTube video. You give me five dollars. <laughs> Uh, it's whitey little piggies i'm not listening to it i'm not gonna play a five minute long song for you for a dollar for oh it's twenty dollars play it as the intro no i apologize i'll put it as in the, the description and it says one dollar yana says australian elections today who's winning don't care your government is completely totally corrupted there's no way that you will be better off once that shit's over uh though apparently the takedown was because of the election the conservatives in government passed the online censorship bill and they're like oh, we're gonna use it to show that we're doing stuff or whatever <clears throat> Ninon says, monkeypox is a tool for white supremacy, supremacy, obviously. Rosanna says, America first, most affected. And that's referring to the gay monkeypox killing people. Uh, I've been watching your show for around two years now. Thanks for the last entertainment. You're truly highlighting my week. No homo, no monkeypox. Thank you. Tamisk says, we truly live in an upper, upper case S simulation. And I agree. Uh, I think that the lines will get blurred as time goes on. You won't know. You won't even know who's real anymore. Jungle Fever says, I'm sorry for starting Monkey Pox, Josh, my bad, but can you blame me how pretty those monkeys are? Uh, oh, God, that reminds me um, of something I wanted to show you guys. You know, I'll save it. I'll pull this up later when the Super Chats get around to it. Um, okay. Thanks for the sneed. You're welcome. Torrent says, first ground, first found you through Monkey Streams. Thank you for keeping me sane during COVID. You're welcome. 
Vodka says, I'm so happy that God will kill gays. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Keep praying, bro. Steenum Feedum says, fellow PMG, bro. I'm based. I'm going to, when it gets closer to my birthday, I'm going to ask for silver. I want you guys to send silver to me in the mail. And I'll do a video of my, uh, I'll go through them. All the silver that people sent in. But don't send it into the mail yet because I can't get it. Uh, wait for, my birthday's in December, and I'll do something. I'll do a, a funny silver stream for that. Uh, not true so for $5, just a tip. Thank you. Viz says, if you're bored, just browse the most traffic board on 4chan every two days and note the bot post pattern is ridiculous. The site's unusable. 4chan is really bad, and I'm pretty sure that they are paid to not do anything about that. I can believe that schizo theory. Kiwi fan says, you're growing anything this year, Josh? No, I'm between apartments, so there will be no plant updates. Abominable Homan says, would you fight Andy Worski for 100K? No, I would not, because um, all that shit is really, really gay to me. I have no interest in any of the boxing matches. There was another boxing match between, like, other celebrities, and there's, like, this huge one where Sam Hyde's, like, training people and shit, and it's just, like, I, I have no interest in any of that shit, to be honest with you. I don't want I don't want my real life like to to blend with this internet shit. I just I, I, there's stuff that I like to do, <laughs> and I don't want to make this like everything. Um, I honestly wonder how do people like Fuentes, Ralph baked and the like have any fans? Honest thoughts as to why uh, daddy issues. I I believe that all those people have issues with mommy and daddy, and they replace them with internet celebrities. And with Ralph and Nick Fuentes in particular, they have really bad mommy issues. And I think the one of the reasons I, Ralph doesn't like being disrespected by women, but I also think that um, his he knows that the Nick Fuentes cozy TV people hate women. So his whole thing where he just now screams on the mic about you fucking whore, bitch, slut, skank, fuck you, you fucking titty beast, fuck you, like just like off the wall, like woman hatred that is entirely to get super chats from nick fuentes fans who are just like deranged children <laughs> who have very serious issues with their mothers um ken ashcorp has a song about being fucked in the ass by futinari he doesn't use the panda but uses a male looking character it's called we're shameless well thank you for the song recommendation uh killed alive for 20 dollars says hey jersh keep up the good work and stay well may your banana peppers be crisp and tasty thank you i cannot wait to have banana peppers again Evil Sponge says Sneed. Moin says Sprick Deutsch du Hurenzon. Um, I think he's calling me a sunshine. Isn't that what that means? Zazon? Like a little ray of sunshine? Thank you, Moin. Rainbow Rava says Howdy, Josh and Farmers. Hope your days are swell. Enjoy $5 for a pizza day. Thank you. That actually pays off uh, quite a bit of the pizza day. Pursuit Ambulance tips $20. Thank you. Ralph Hamel says, hope you're doing well. Broke Dick Farms, I am. Thank you. Hard R says, thanks for all the laugh to your feeder. Anonymous for $100 says, the docs man could be anyone. In fact, there is, in that, there is pride. That's true. Our, our nefarious Kiwi influence spreads far and wide. And everyone knows about us, but they can't say our name. Wizard Fist says, hey, Josh, maybe Muslims are right. You need to embrace the glory of Allah to destroy the decadent West. I'm not all, I'm not for the pagan shit. And I'm not for the Muslim shit. Um, Islam is a, is a really gross pedophilic religion. Uh, to the Bible's credit, Jesus doesn't have a wife, so it's not possible to be like, oh, he married like an eight-year-old um, and then like like castigate him for that. Allah did marry a nine-year-old. Supposedly he only fucked her after her first period, but it's like, that's literal like grooming. It's not like he married into a Royal family through Asia, as far as I'm aware. He just like said, Oh, that's a sexy nine-year-old. I'm going to put her in my harem. And it's like, eh, I'm not about that. Like pedophile desert nomad shit. And I think that the pagan stuff is, is gay. Cause it's like the pagan stuff had its place in history and now it's dead. And sitting around trying to resurrect a dead religion about worshiping the forest and shit. It's just like, it's not going to work. It's not going to fix Western society. So just uh, make something new. Make something new that does work. Because resurrecting dead symbols is not going to it's not gonna fix anything. The, the past is the past for a reason. We don't have kings anymore for a reason. Uh, make something new. Off with your head says, Fiesta potatoes from Taco Bell are the best. I haven't had that, but I do miss Taco Bell quite a bit. Last time I had that was in the Philippines, and it was considered like a delicacy there. <laughs> it was expensive, fancy American food. 
Kura Yuma for, uh, tips ten dollars for nothing. Thank you. Monkey dot mp4 says Monkey Remix was made by Lakimbra of Hardman Working Hard. He made it after I posted your clip in the Discord. Well, oh, that's great. I love that guy. Uh, it's it, yeah, it was very good. Um, it's one of the best like Ralph memes that have come out in a while. <laughs> and that's funny because he was playing an Aerosmith song at the beginning of this. It's funny. Oh, you're a bitch. Oh, you're talking. That's shit. the same guy, Shut right? Shut up, bitch. So that's that's coincidental. Oh, Guns N' Roses. Okay, whatever. No, I don't know anything about music. I just listen to shit. Okay, I listen to furry trap panda songs. Don't don't quiz me on eighties music. Uh, James for one dollar says, I want to thank you, Josh, for your content. I was watching an old Maddie where you mentioned coding as a career path. I started coding and I'm currently on the front end dev career path. Well, congratulations on your transition and I hope you well in your breastfeeding, <laughs> your breastfeeding in the future. Uh, no, but seriously, good luck. Don't get fired for saying the N word and make a lot of money so you can financially support my, my horrific website. Redtail for $40 says, Ralph was mad because it was endless super chats against him. No one against his enemies or complimentary. I don't know why he's expecting compliments if that's the case. I think it's just that he's very thin-skinned, and he expects her to be like, oh, I'm not going to read any of these just for you, Ralph, because I respect you so much. You're such a Ralph a male. Um, and it, it really upsets him when he leaves his hug box and he realizes that everyone thinks – thinks not that they're like – they hate him or that he's like – a threat to them, but he's just like a big fat clown that everyone makes fun of. Uh, Chilligan says, happy Friday, Josh. You might like this song. Let's see what it is. I might know it. <laughs> Uncle Jim, superstars of Greenwich Meantime. I'll listen to it. It's 16 minutes. Is that like related to maybe it's the entire album? I'll listen to it after the stream. Thank you, though. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get so many copyright strikes for the stream because I played so much music. I'll make fun of Jim's fat Korean slut and Rakita's disabled kids, but do not make fun of my mommy. That's not a, that's not me. That's a that's a super chat, by the way. I guess that's part of the joy of these, right? It's like you get to hear the voice, the the artificial intelligence that puppets the stream to say the things that you want, so you can clip it. Uh, <clears throat> But Boyum says, "Sweet honey, child, you know nothing about my quad sack." Kitty Guzzlers. Sweet honey child, you know nothing about my quad sack kitty. <laughs> oh, oh, like four boobs. Okay, I got you. Uh, I'm glad to not know anything about that, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, this this platform does not like stream of men. I, I might have missed some. Oh, if I missed any because of how this works, I apologize. Uh, me... For five dollars says here's a couple of nickels for you. Thank you. Twinkle Tart for a hundred dollars says good stream today. Thank you. Very much. Uh Moritsune says, I'd like to request a few seconds of this Keemstar remix now that you've already played one. Is this gonna be the one that I've already played? Are we on the the hive mind here? Classical Keemstar. Why am I am I still getting paid? Why am I am I still getting paid? That's pretty good. That's very classic. I feel enriched. I feel like they say that if you listen to classical music, your IQ goes up or whatever. Uh, I, I feel like I've gained an IQ point. They should play that in the, the natal words for all the babies to hear when they're getting breastfed by their second mother. Pepsi Man says, I tried to send Nick Rakita never talked about your ugly children as a super chat on the Chrissy Myers stream, but YouTube wouldn't let me. Um, so machine learning works just very, very quickly. Machine learning works by applying points to words. So if you have um, certain words, like for instance, gay might be negative five points, but if the sentence has lots of positive words like congratulations on coming out as gay, like coming out probably has like a couple of positive points to it. Congratulations has positive points to it. So it'll like evaluate that mathematically and say that that sentence is a positive sentence. Whereas um, uh, words like fucking probably have negative connotations to it. So it'll say like, dude, you're so fucking gay. We'll probably have a score of like negative 10. And then we'll just say like, sorry, um, this message was spam and it won't send it. So machine learning, um, evaluates messages like that to try and understand the connotation of a word versus that. So you say like, uh, 
Nick Ricada never is probably like a, a bad point. Nick talked about yours like neutral, but then ugly, ugly is like ugly children. They'll say like that's a negative adjective and say like don't send that. It's a that's too mean for the system. Hungry like the gun says Ralph Larping is a WWE wrestler acting like he's doing an entrance posing and doing the main expression that he sees on TV. His coke fueled head can cope that he's doing as a heel character. He's always called himself a heel character, but now he like wants to live it. Um, oh, oh God, are they like still coming in? <laughs> uh, Pursuit Ambulance for another 20 says, please replicate the Ralph face in a photo. It will be a new trend. This is a good idea. Pursuit Ambulance already only has good ideas. Not a fucking chance, bro. I apologize. <laughs> Ice Mexican says, would you go to the fight between Andy and Bog Hog? Why do you think AF won't say your name or mention you directly? Um, first one, f would I go to the fight? Absolutely not. You see what, ha saw what happened to everyone who went to Knoxville. Coach Red Pill was tortured by Ukrainian militiamen. And, uh, Ralph was gunted. Uh, Gator was doxxed. Nick Riceda ended up becoming an anime girl. If I went to Knoxville too, I don't know. I would just, my, my heart would explode out of my chest into like an alien that would then eat my face from, from my chest. So no, that's not happening. Why do you think America First won't say your name or mention you directly? Because my site is um, a good resource for things that inconvenience them. It's the same reason why during Gamergate, all the anti-Gamergate people were free to like rail on 8chan as being like a hate site. But I was told ex explicitly by one of the literally who's in a private conversation uh, during Gamergate that they had agreed amongst themselves to never name drop the Kiwi Farms. And that trend has continued with like the ADL and these these news publications. That they're free to drop 4chan and 8chan and all these different sites, but for whatever reason, they just don't mention us. It's also probably because we're so small compared to those sites, um, at least, you know, 4chan shit, that they don't want to give us like positive attention either. Uh, Mortuni says again, Ralph Sharded. The monkey strikes back for 20 says, finding a 3PL isn't that fucking hard. Retard, just Google it. Ha, ha, ha. And then he links a 3PL company. I've tried. I'm getting offers from, like, Indians now saying, like, hello, have you considered using a 3PL in India? Um, I have, but most of my customers are American. That's the issue. I found one in, in out of Germany, but uh, I think that would be really expensive to ship to the U.S. Maybe we'll just do, like, an, a Euro-only merchandise sale, and the Amerisharts can just... Uh, can just cry and then I'll just won't make any money <laughs> at all from it. Anonymous asks, will Ralph, when Ralph dies, will you do a Maddie on his life? Absolutely. I will do a proper video. I will do a documentary cut professional acting and stuff, proper notes, four hours long. I'm going to do one of those videos that says like the, the downfall of Ethan Ralph that gets like 8 million views. I'll make a completely new channel for it. Just called the downfall of Ethan Ralph. And I'll make this shit advertiser friendly. We'll get 40 million views and I, I will retire. That's my plan. George Bush says, did you see this clip of George Bush? It's a very sh must watch, very short clip. Um, this is probably the clip where he says that Putin shouldn't have invaded Iraq. In contrast, Russian elections are rigged. Political opponents are imprisoned or otherwise eliminated from participating in the electoral process. The result is an absence of checks and balances in Russia and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq. I mean, of Ukraine. <laughs> he laughed after Iraq. that. Anyway. <laughs> I mean, of the Ukraine, Iraq. Anyway, uh, <laughs> seventy-five. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, what a what a lovable old war criminal who tortured poor Iraqi children and destroyed our entire country. It's it's, it's so funny when when uh, when total fucking monsters have human moments like that. By the way, this reminds me of something else I intended to play but did not. Other questions. This is about a minute long, and I'll just play this because I, I feel like it. Don't question me. Uh, Alberto Bola. Other questions. See one right there. Hi there. Uh, who man hacked me? I run the diabetes group for Medtronic. Um, I have a question about patient engagement, and you had touched on this before. Um, all of these advances are amazing, but even if you make the greatest drug or the greatest wearable, 
there's no guarantee that the patient is going to take the drug or <coughs> wear the device. So how are you thinking about technology to engage the patient? Again, maybe I will use an example. I think uh, it's fascinating what's happening in this field right now. I mean, FDA approved the first uh, electronic pill, if I can call it like that. So it is a basically biological chip that it is in the tablet. And once you take the tablet and dissolves into your stomach, it sends a signal that you took the tablet. So imagine the applications of that, uh, compliance. Uh, the insurance companies to know that the medicines that patients should take, they do take them. Uh, it is uh, fascinating what happens in, in uh, this field. But of course, there will yep. be an initial cost that someone needs to invest. You will eat the bugs. You will own nothing. And you will take your microchip tablet, which ensures compliance. And you will be happy. Just wonderful. Wonderful. I need to make a whole schizo repository of shit from the WEF that makes me want to jump out the fucking window. <laughs> uh, just a reminder that uh, Dr. Theodore Kaczynski wrote a very interesting uh, thesis about industrial society called Industrial Society and its Future, which you should all read. It's a, it's a very interesting piece about uh, that answers questions like this. Ima imagines the compliance chat. Um, hey, bro, glad to see that you're still streaming. No hard feelings. Press S to spit on Gunt. Press S. Thank you, Onion Wizard. Uh, Monkey Pox says, Monkey Pox is the white man's plan to make buck-breaking lethal. Cryos says, thanks for all the content. Keep on keeping on, Josh. Thank you. Um, Lobster says, for 1776, nothing at all. And that's the end. Do not tip anymore. I'm not going to read it. Uh, thank you, guys, for everyone who stuck around through the Super Chat stuff. Uh, I am. I'm, I have to hustle. I have to hustle to... Uh, Try and pay for my bills. All, all these programs, all, the, all my DDoS filtering stuff, all my new hardware and shit. So uh, I, once I move, I'm going to uh, do more Gumroad stuff and try to keep people on Gumroad happy. I, I, I do appreciate it, people who've stuck by on Gumroad. If it sounds like I'm being very avaricious right now, it's because there's stuff I want to do and it's expensive. <laughs> So I'm trying to figure out a way to make it work. Uh, and I'm trying to get my fucking forum done. And I want to sell merchandise because we've been doing that every year. And I just can't because I can't find a fucking company to ship it. And it's really just stressful as shit. Uh, imagine, imagine having four star days, chat. Couldn't be me. I only have five star days. All right. Outro song. Outro song. Uh, I picked this because I, I found it, it's a meme song. But it's actually pretty good. So uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone who's super chatted. Thank you, everyone on the Gum Road. Uh, Maddie.live will be the archive. I got the archive all caught up if you're an RSS listener. Uh, thank you, everyone who listens by RSS. And I will see you on Friday, next Friday. Okay, bye-bye. I thought I had it all together, but I was led astray. Change my state of mind When love's so hard to find Your feelings changed like the weather Went from blue to gray All that time and day How can I go on When the got falling apart Love's so hard to find When someone's on your mind Listen baby Your wish is mine